Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. I have lots and lots and lots and lots of things to talk about today. I got some news items. I got some weather. I got your city council report. Even though city council was about only 23 minutes long, I still am going to be talking about the Day of the Dead parade, in which uh, they were talking about some of the controversy that's happening here in the Day of the Dead parade uh, per in Missoula, particularly. So I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, I also have dubbing stuff back today as well. Um, let's see. Yeah, and I got some new programs for you guys just to enjoy, including um, Sunday Streets. So let's kick it off with a little bit of weather. Um, this week, it doesn't look too bad, um, but of course by Thursday, Friday, you're going to expect those rains to happen over the basically just Friday. It looks like it's only going to peak Friday night. So, uh, no, no, not Friday night. It's going to be pretty much Friday. It's going to be rains likely at 70% chances. Um, today, you can expect your high to be 61, and then Thursday is going to peak at 70 so if you guys are uh, interested in going out and about thursday is the day to do it because honestly look at it it's going to be a beautiful week um yesterday obviously uh we had winds as high as in the 50 mile per hour uh range so we were looking out for that as well. But let's talk about what's happening here in Missoula. If you haven't read in the newspaper already this morning in the Missoulian, you uh, you can kind of see that um, the two uh, um, the two alleged killers in the homicide case are basically acti acting like the Missoula's natural born killers. But of course, since the double homicide that left Missoula shaken August 17th of this year with the bodies of 15 year old Marilyn Pickett and a 24 year old uh, Jackson uh, Wiles um, were found in the three tubs filled with chemicals in the basement of Augusta Standing Rock and Tiffany Pierce's home. Since then, the trial has started. Uh, Tiffany Pierce has openly expressed herself as someone who will repeat any acts of violence towards police by shooting them in the head. Um, other activities include threatening other inmates and guards. Two hour long inci uh, incident on September 11th where attorney uh, uh, Kirsten Papps said that jail's special response team was deployed after Stanley Rock threatened staff with a sharpened handle of a shower brush. Um, he also challenged a uh, detention officer to a fight and told the inmates to stab and kill guards. You can take them, according to Pap's motion. Um, so Standing Rock has been put into restraints and kept at ma in maximum security cell. Pierce has made um, court appearances, even though uh, she has threatened to uh, uh, any violence towards anybody uh, at this particular time, but, um, but has been able to appear in the court cases and put uh, away from people. Uh, I mean, like probably the farthest way as possible they can in the courtroom, and there hasn't been any incidents as well. Um, so the whole article is in the Missoulian. It's worth a read. It's kind of crazy for sure if you get a chance to read it. So let's talk about what's happening in the state. Um, water supply in Flaxville, Montana is dealing with a water crisis in the form of water w from the farmer's soil runoff uh, with the high levels of nitrate in the drinking water, harmful effects to children as much as death for babies under six months of age. Um, Monday, the community's water system made a list of 26 Montana drinking water suppliers um, challenged by either high nitrate levels or total uh, trihalomethanes. Sorry about that. Um, it's a dubious uh, recognition related to, at least in some cases, of farm runoff. The Environmental Working Group rounded up tap water data from almost 50,000 United States utilities where nitrates and those um, are problems. Two parts per million as well uh, within the safe zone of nitrates, the Environmental Protection Agency sounded the alarm when the nitrates level surpassed 10 parts per million in the Fox film. So EWG is asking Congress as lawmakers to draft a new farm bill to require farmers to minimize the overuse of fertilizers and limit soil runoffs that they can contaminate nearby public water supplies. The goal is, that is to treat the cause of drinking water problems rather than treat the water after it's contaminated. However, the nitrogen and phosphates runoff from farms is implicated in damaging the Mississippi River bison. Fertilizer used in the Midwest has increased significantly over the last 25 years, according to the U.S. Geology Survey. Nitrogen has been implicated in depleting oxygen in water. Dead zones have developed in the Gulf of Mexico where the lack of oxygen in um, Gulf water over several miles kills, kills fish that swim to it. And this was from the Billings Gazette. They also talk about how the Mississippi River is also doing with a lot of um, high nitrates and uh, soil runoff as well. So you guys should check that out. It's from the Billings Gazette. But um, here's happening. Here's a little thing that's uh, not much of a crisis uh, for people who uh, don't have a Google account. So Google has announced that the Google Drive will no longer be available 
um, in March of 2018. What is being used for uh, storing and sharing documents from videos to slideshows, spreadsheets, etc., and has now been notifying users like myself that of the impending end of Google Drive by March 2018 and suspending updates and support as early as December 11th. So uh, December 11th, um, that's when you can see if there's any problems happening, no more updates, no more anything uh, help for any of people who are doing it. And of course, uh, Google has two fairly new software tools for backing your data and or accessing files in the cloud. Um, there's a backup in sync and all encompassing consumer app that replaces both standalone Google Drive and Google Photos uploaders app. It offers essentially the same functionality as the drive as and works much as as much as the same way. So Drive file stream will be uh, the new app. So it, I haven't found out. I mean, like I was looking it up, and I was just like, okay, so what is the new uh, other one? So apparently, it's called Drive File Stream, which will be the kind of like the replacement for Google Drive. So um, that's kind of what's happening in the news and around. Here is uh, new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. Um, I'm going to. Um, I made an appearance in Sunday Streets, um, but also there's a couple other things happening, including. Um, I just want to make a. Uh, uh, statement for MCAT saying that uh, we are sorry that we're unable we were unable to uh, live uh, live broadcast and stream the uh, the UM homecoming parade this year. Technical difficulties happened, but we were able to uh, rectify by posting that uh, video online, so you can watch the UM homecoming parade anytime by going on to MCAT.org. Much like it, these programs I'm about to show you. So when I come back, I'm going to talk about some things that happen in, in City Council right after this. And thank you, Ira, and thank you, um, of course, to our hosts here at the Food Bank. This is probably the most beautiful kitchen that I've ever cooked in, <laughs> so I think we're in for a treat. Um, I should probably preface this by saying that the only thing I knew to cook probably until I was maybe 22, 23 was like boiling water for pasta, <laughs> so I am not a professional chef. Um, but the point is that um, we can work with these lentils and these heritage greens that are grown by our Montana neighbors um, without having to be in the kitchen for hours and hours. There are awesome things we can do if we want um, you know, to kind of go to those links, but this is more of kind of about, this is what I do on a daily basis in my own kitchen with lentils and heritage grains um, and kind of how I take a basic template and spice it up. So I actually did this at Intaglio Pie because it etched copper plates, and I made A to Z as um, letters on copper plates. There's the letter J, that's Baskerville. Oh, sorry, that's Garamond, that's Garamond font. And they're about um, eight inches square, seven inches square. And then you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna print them on top of each other. The thing, the reason I chose Intaglio is that um, maybe you can tell from this letter A, if you don't know much about etching, you know, you, you use an acid to bite into a copper plate. And I photographed this, you know, this raping white so you can tell the depth. So it was a really quite a thick layer of ink. And I have to say that I was uh, very much influenced by um, work I had seen of Richard Serra's, who had done these gorgeous basalt um, etchings. He, he, he had drawn, or I guess drawn, painted these simple images of the, of the um, rock in the back of the basalt. basalt. I'm saying it wrong in public, right? And they were just these super dense things. It would take a pound of ink at a time to print, and they were the papers sagging. But they were so rich within the black. There was all these layers, much like what I'm enjoying here. So I wanted to, to emulate that. Big Sky High School Marching Band. Braves 
marching band has marched in six public performances this season, and they're proud to be making their seventh and final performance of the season at the UF Homecoming Parade for Flat Height the High School Marching Band. Hey guys, welcome back. And you'll be seeing that pretty much all week, all month long of the UM Hom Homecoming Parade. It brings nonprofit civic groups and um, commercial uh, floats, um, even university um, alum, all sorts of different things happening there. Um, I mean, I, 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 really, I, I really just can't think of anything that. Um, talks about uh, what happened for the UN parade. So let's move on to the next topic before I lose it. Uh, <laughs> um, so basically, uh, if you haven't already heard, the last city council meeting, um, people um, from the Missoula community voiced concerns about the Day of the Dead Festival coming up. It, it will be the 25th annual Day of the Dead Festival. I talked to some people within the Day of the De Dead Festival. My sources tell me that um, they didn't hear too much about it last year, but this year they were de they uh, definitely heard about it. But it's something that's been going on for 20 plus years in Missoula is kind of hard to break after a while. And this is one of the people who are supporters of the Day of the Dead Festival, and this is why. This is John Paoli. Sharing and learning from other cultures unites us all. Being insular and self-serving only acknowledges an entity of one. The festival tries to embrace, engage, and learn from all cultures. If one really desires a monoculture, just look back to Nazi Germany to know the harm caused by believing one culture is more deserving than another. This festival with its classes, workshops, and events works across all age and cultural groups of this valley. They provide an outlet and a learning experience to honor and respect those who came before us. At the initial kickoff gathering, <clears throat> there was a period where all present could share a memory or a tribute. I was quite moved when a young white woman started to tell her story. She was in a tragic car accident near Avon. Her partner was killed. <coughs> He was Mexican. Now she's confused because is she not to honor her partner? This festival has always been more than a cultural crossover. It is catharsis for however someone chooses to show it. We need to accept all cultures, learn from and experience all cultures, not to exclude. In this festival, we do need to honor and pay homage to those who came before us, whatever culture they may be. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, so that is Dave Paoli um, talking about that. Uh, Gwen Jones from the uh, City Council also responded to this as well. Not directly, but um, this is what she had to say about the Day of the Dead Festival and what um, Missoulians can do to improve connection. Talking a lot about this these days. Um, last time I spoke a couple of weeks ago, I had uh, shared that my exposure to the Day of the Dead uh, festivities in Southern California had been pretty a, a different take on it than what Missoula does. But I hoped that there would be some discussions between the groups and they could work it out and, and get to a better place. Um, and it was interesting, last Thursday and Friday, I was at the University of Montana Law School Public Lands Forum, a continuing education class, which normally legal education classes are not that exciting, but I have to tell you, every two years they put this on, the law school does, and it is fascinating. And the focus this year was natural resources and energy development and public lands, which, as you can imagine, are highly contentious issues in the American West. 
and they had some amazing speakers and over and over again there were examples of situations that did not work and situations that did work and there have been scenarios where energy companies come in and spend a huge amount of time truly working with the community figuring out the right approach and sometimes those are successful instead of turning into litigation and bleeding everyone dry. And I, I took away from that, the, the main theme was really when people work together with respect and they communicate and they collaborate, you can get to a better place. And I think all of our cultures are borrowing from this and that. The English language is the richest language in the world because it's a big medley of so many languages. And our culture is that too. So I really hope that the different entities that have strong opinions on the Day of the Dead have some respectful, polite discourse and figure out how our community can go forward and have a constructive situation. And I, I also wanted to say, you know, they talk about Lake Wobegon has... Oh, all right, so that was uh, Gwen Jones talking about that topic. Um, so basically, it seems like the event has been going on for over... So this will be the 25th year in Missoula and been used as a way to bring the community together in celebrating the dead. And a as we are smart enough to know that death exists in the natural world, and the event will continue along with many other events that will lead up to the Day of the Dead Parade on November 2nd. Uh, the meeting was 23 minutes long, so if you are interested in finding out more information, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. Uh, it was a very short meeting, um, but those are just kind of like the highlights and some of the things that they're talking about. Just kind of continuing on what I was talking about last uh, two weeks ago on Wednesday. Um, City Council didn't have any meetings just last week, but just letting you guys know, you all you got to do is go to this website, ci.missoula.mt.us. Another great resource for you guys is Missoula's Community Media Resource, which is MCAT. MCAT.org is a wonderful website for people to learn more information about MCAT and to watch programs on here as well. So if you don't have any luck finding the city council program on the uh, city's website, you can always go to MCAT.org and click on 190 and be able to access that as well. But of course, 189 is where you can get all the local programming that is made here in the city of Missoula. Um, also, if you want to find out more information about moi, you can go to wakeupmissoula.org wixsite.com slash wake up missoula i keep my most recent episodes at the, at the top of the page you can always go to videos to see past videos and more and you can watch uh past dubbing stuff so my stop motion videos flagship friday past interviews and of course my entire stop motion anthology so that's kind of what's happening there um i got a new dubbing stuff for you guys uh but of course before i get to that i want you i want to mention that um Every Wednesday, MCAT hosts an orientation, so if you're interested in coming down here and learning about the media arts, you're more than welcome to come down here and get a leg up on the competition. It, it's a good starting platform for people who want to get involved with uh, video production, so that happens every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. here at Missoula's Community Media Resource. So it's located 500 North Higgins, Suite 105, and if you want to go through the entrance, you just go through the Spruce Street entrance. We're not on Spruce. Uh, our uh, address isn't Spruce but it might as well be since that's where our entry way into MCAT is. You can't miss us. So without further ado, here is a brand new dub and stuff where I basically insert my voice into an old uh, public domain movie and I hope you guys enjoy. So when I come back, I'll talk about events that are happening inside the city of Missoula. There's a lot happening, so stay with me. I have something very special for you, my dear. You don't say. I'm really excited to see what you got in store for me. <laughs> it's a little thing called dubbing stuff. <clears throat> uh -huh. Well, dubbing stuff isn't that great, you know. Not that many people actually watch this videos or whatever. It's just, you know. <sighs> oh well, maybe people just don't appreciate how much work goes into these uh, voiceover videos that I do for the people, you know. Really? How much well, work? Well, it's very quite simple, my dear. First, I get an editing software that allows me to do a voiceover. Let me get pretty meta and show you a nice clip from a movie called. The Fat Spy. <laughs> gotta run, gotta run, gotta run really fast. <laughs> gotta run, gotta go, gotta go really fast. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go really fast. <laughs> I'm really good at sneaking. Uh, what are these flowers called? Rock and roll! 
try not to uh, try not to trip. Whoa! Oh, I almost tripped. Hey, I almost tripped there. <laughs> hey. Hey, baby. You been gardening long? Gardening is my passion. <laughs> Better not step out of garden. <laughs> It's been a long time. Not quite long enough, dearie. My love for you is as red hot as that it's shirt. It's orange. How have you been, old You're friend? You're not putting me in the friend zone that easily. Hold up. I will give you a tricep to play with. Only a tricep. <coughs> I'll take what I can get. Ooh, this is nice. You've been working out. Oh, yes. I've made a yes. terrible mistake. There could be love between friends. And I like to watch. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back, and now let's talk about some things that are happening inside the city of Missoula. So you can find out more information about the city by going to onto MissoulaEvents.net. So let's kick things off with this morning with Alphabet Soup. It's a game that hosted by the Family's First Children M Museum, which teaches kids words and stuff, and it starts at 11, and it goes until 12 at Family's First Children's Museum. Intro to Twitter. If you know anything about Twitter, or you want to um, hone your skills, or be like, you know, I know a lot about Twitter, but I should take this class just to see how much other people don't know about Twitter. So you can totally do that at 1230 at the Missoula Public Library um, and you can check it out. You can call it 721-BOOK to RSVP. Uh, Makerspace uh, Journal Decor Day at the Missoula Public Library at 2 p.m. So after you're done with Twitter, you can make a journal. So this is a 2017 art journal to start or continue to make your cover creative during this class, which means which meets in the large meeting room. New participants are welcome to join but are sure to bring a journal to class Class is limited to 10 participants, and once again, you can call it uh, 721 Book um, to find out more information as well. Um, Missoula School Writer, Middle School Writers Group is happening at the Missoula Public Library from 3:30 to 5 p.m. So all this is stuff is happening at the Missoula Public Library. There's a lot of cool things happening there as well. There's a couple yoga things happening. You can look at uh, MissoulaEvents.net as well. There's a bunch of things happening with the Missoula Insectarium. But um, it seems like today seems like there's a lot of just kind of like afternoon after school events. But I'll get into your uh, Thursday events, which is a lot of uh, basically day camps because kids don't have school on Thursday and Friday. I'll get to that in a bit. Fall downtown ladies night. So uh, grab your favorite ladies and enjoy a night of strolling downtown in a crisp fall air as you sip and shop your way from store to store. Get into It's just an excuse to shop. Sorry. Uh, so get something special for that special someone or go all out and spoil yourself. The downtown retailers are here to help you on your night out with the gals enter to win a downtown gift basket the more you shop the more entries you get so apparently there's going to be a lot of entries so if you're interested in going around town filling out your name and put it into a box great that will be help improve your chances at getting a downtown um basic i, I guess a downtown raffle in a way um yeah so that's kind of like the deal but you must uh i think the rules is that you have to actually buy something from the place you can't just show up and put your uh the card in there so just think about that um meals for a week Dif dickinson lifelong learning center let's face it finding the time to shop and cook healthy meals can be challenging this class makes it easy for you at the lifelong learning center at 6 p.m you c they will prepare three main dishes and three side dishes for two people with everything you need including cooking instruction and a full recipe to replicate at home um, in addition you will make a four side dishes to complement the meal or for lunches. All ingredients are provided. Bring your uh, four quart containers and freezer bags and a cooler to keep your meals cool on the ride home. So the whole idea is that you hang out, you make your food and you take, you basically bake and take. Yeah, that, that works, I guess. Okay, so that happens at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center at 6 p.m. Learn to sew a woven t-shirt uh, at the Confident Stitch here in Missoula, Montana. If you uh, if you love stitching and doing all sorts of stuff, you'll be making the Scout Tee, a uh, versatile women um, t-shirt for um, Grand Line Studios. In the process, you'll learn the basics of how to fit a pattern, set in sleeves, and sew a bound, um, bound necklace. I don't know what that is. Uh, make yours out of a pretty uh, cotton lawn, a cozy flannel, or even a quilting cotton and this happens basically uh, Wednesdays from October 18th that's today until November 8th and this is a 6 to 8 30 p.m. Um, class and it's $80 uh, pint and a print Zootown um, Arts Community Center is hosting a pint and a uh, print so the whole idea is you hang out you drink a pint and you take um, 
down a brew learning to do printmaking and create a piece of art that you can take home that night and that's happening at the Zootown Arts Community Center at 6 p.m. Uh, basically it's on the north side next to the kettle house you can't miss it. Uh, 3D printing 101 workshop at the Makerspace. Missoula Public Library hosts a open um, printing um, class for people who are interested in doing 3D printing and learning all about it from the um, ma uh, Missoula Public Library Makerspace. The whole idea of these classes is to kind of get an introduction and basically help you create a, th uh, a 3D object um, that simple. And uh, of course, uh, open hours in the Makerspace is uh, also provided at the Missoula Public Library for people who want to print things overnight and do that kind of thing as well. It takes a long time to print. It, it really does. I uh, I was there the other day and it was like, what? This is going to take 11 hours? Okay. So I <laughs> and then I left and I never came back. But I, I but I just wanted to print something to do like a an example and whatnot so I can get on camera and just like I'm not going to film for 11 hours. So. Anyways, let's move on to the next topic before I go on a rant too much. Poetry Slam is happening tonight at 7 p.m. at the E3 Convergence Gallery. It's hosted by Joey, Joey Haven and Jared Brookhart. Bring your A-game and compete uh, with verbal prowess or be one of the judges and make your own opinion known or just sit back and enjoy the show no matter how you slice it. The slams are always fun and unique evening so don't miss it and be aware that it is uh, some um, speakers not, not may not be age appropriate so you may need to uh, be aware of that so all ages are attended but of course please know it that the poets will not be censored um, homegrown comedy so if you are uh, interested in comedy instead of poetry you can go to the Roxy Theater at 7 30 p.m. tonight as well and it's basically just an open mic comedy night and you can sign up um, by uh, calling them at 240-2395 to sign up for the first uh, Friday of and then of course sign up begins the first Friday of every month and the shows will be capped uh, at 17 slots so you can't do any so once they fill up they'll be full so that's happening tonight at the rock scene so and uh, speaking of more storytelling and more comedy type stuff the moth story slam in Missoula at, is gonna be at the University of Montana so there's a lot of storytelling a lot of expression tonight through spoken word so that's happening tonight um, earth is prepare a five-minute story about earth um, and their community with nature digging up dirt or saving our blue marble, cooling or warming, believe it or denying, uniting or greater dividing, um, bring us stories of Mother Nature, Smokey the Bear, and other salts on the earth. And this is the Moth Story Slam. So they're they're a national renowned storytelling um, group, and they're coming here to Missoula for one night only at the University of Montana. So it's kind of like it's basically like tell us something, but nationally known. Um, but of course. Um, th but as you like it, it's still at the Massacre Theater at the University of Montana. So the, the UM uh, Theater Dance uh, is doing a show. It is a sa Shakespeare show as well. So that's kind of what's happening for uh, Wednesday night. Here are just a brief overview of some things as well. Uh, you got a cabaret series happening um, at the public house, and it's called Time for Three. And it's going to be at 730. Um, there's going to be VFW. It's going to be... Uh, electronic DJ music at a VFW. You got karaoke at Eagles Lodge, Badlander, and Sunrise Saloon all happening tonight as well. I do not have an art clip, so I'm just going to push right through and uh, go right into Thursday events for you guys as well. So I I'll differentiate it by going to this camera. So uh, Thursday, school's out, but get rid of your kids for a day. You can go to the Parks and Recreation School's Out Day Camp starting at 8 a.m. You can call them at um, 721 Park or 721 7275. Get rid of your kids and have them hang out at the Missoula Parks and Recreation. Parents love their low participant to staff ratio and enthusiastic camp leaders. Kids love the field trips, outdoor adventures, arts and crafts, and it's going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be 71 degrees outside. It's a great way to be outdoors and about before the weather gets too cold in which uh, most of the outdoor activities includes uh, snowboarding and whatnot. So check that out. That's happening at the Parks and Recreation school days. Um, and let's see any other details nope pretty much that's it you just call the Missoula Parks and Recreation about this um, schools out day camp but of course if you're not interested in that Missoula Insectarium is also doing a schools out day camp at the Missoula Insectarium which I just said at 9 a.m. starting unfortunately most working parents do not have these days off on most of these days the Missoula Insectarium hosts schools out uh, bug camps these days uh, the camps are full days of full camps activities adventures and a lots and lots of bug times so the fall dates are um, the 25th um, uh, the the 19th, the 20th, which is tomorrow and the next day, and the next one's going to be on Friday, 
um, November 10th as well, which will be the next one. So uh, you guys can check that out as well as well sorry about that it's fifty dollars and it's forty five dollars for members and it goes from 9 a.m to 4 p.m and this is for kids age 5 to 11 so learn about bugs and stuff um and keep your kids away and keep your kids busy while you are at work so uh, rather than paying a babysitter it's nice uh, they get a it's nice to learn and experience and stuff like that but let's not let's not go too far um spider anatomy 101 is happening in the missouri Sectarium. start at 3 p.m tomorrow afternoon do you, uh you want to know what a part of the body of a spider's legs come from do you know where or what the uh uh silophorax uh cella for cella Philorax, Cellphilorax, cel oof, is, <laughs> I don't know, I didn't even know how to say it. Join us to learn the basics about spider body parts, as well as a couple uh, fun new vocab words and trivia t tidbits. They're making fun spider anatomy models to take home and help the learning adventure along. Um, learning to Change, Living Art Multi-Session, Living Art of Montana is hosting six Thursdays of um, Learning to Change, Leaning into Change, sorry about that, with Odette Grassi, Tana Oshawerk, Worski, Bev Glucker, Tracy Pondorf, and uh, Silaki Photography. And this happens from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Thursdays all the way until uh, basically it's going to end today. Uh, it's going to end tomorrow at the 19th. This is the last day to do it. Um, you live in Art of Montana is a organization that helps people cope with loss or people who are dealing with a terminal illness as well. Uh, and it's for people who are 18 and over. So just so you guys know. Um, game of Votes, uh, Montperg Candidate Forum, University of Montana. Come join the candidates for an upcoming municipal elections. They'll have free pizza and a chance to uh, for for all to ask questions and learn more about what will be the leading our community after November 7th. This is a nonpartisan and Martin Park will have free voting guides available. So um, Martin Park is an organization on campus to help um, students um, have their voices heard through democracy. Uh, living, in, living into your dreams, that's an interesting phrase, but uh, University of Montana is having a goal or dream that you're working on or want to work on. Please attend the free workshop, Living Your Dream, colon, three ways to know you are on track. Presented by Sophia Samuels, PhD at the UM Continuing Education Conference Center, room 203, 32 Campus Drive, Missoula, Montana. Whatever your goals, this workshop will provide um, the steps for your success. And that's happening at the uh, University of Montana at 5.30 p.m. in the UM Continuing Education Conference Center. So let's talk about the travel ban. Um, <laughs> Imagination Brewing Company at 6 p.m. is hosting a thoughtful and reflect, uh, respectful dialogue in our communities about a communities and a nation is needed more than ever. Humanities Montana is proud to offer the Current State Dialogue Series, a conversation series that challenges Montanans to think and talk about identity, race, religion, and community. The first conversation will take place today, tomorrow night at, from 6 to 8 p.m. at Imagination Brewing Company in Missoula. The focus will be on immigration and the travel ban and will feature uh, Shahid Haq, founder and president of the uh, Montana Immigrant Justice Alliance, immigration lawyer and law instructor at UM, Danny Tenenbaum, Missoula attorney for and, and former refugee officer with the Tar Department of Homeland Security. So that's what they're going to be talking about that night as well. It's also Grizz Glow uh, Yoga Night happening at the University of Montana starting at 7.45 p.m. It's a weird time. I don't know why it's 7.45. So uh, it happens from 7.45 to 9 p.m. The University of Montana's Campus Recreation. Bring your, yo bring your yoga mats, glow in the dark, body paint, and glow jewelry will be provided. Oh, sorry. Yoga mats will be provided. Great. So you just got to show up. Uh, make sure you wear uh, um, sweatpants, but most of you university students will probably be wearing sweatpants right now, even at class. So the class is $5 for members and $13 for non-members, and it's Grizz Glow Yoga. The whole idea is that you're in a dark room and you glow in the dark. It's cool. Whatever. It's like a uh, rave, but instead you just do yoga. So uh, Blaze Dodgeball, it's the last night to do uh, play some dodgeball hosted by the uh, Blaze and the Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. Every Thursday night, uh, basically from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., you play dodgeball. It's pretty short and simple. Um, you can in, you can bring a, a group of people, but this is a four to six adult players on it per team. And the spring session was a blast, and you don't want to miss out on all the fun. So they'll be doing another spring semester probably sometime in 2018, but this is your last chance to check it out in the fall of 2017. So 
yeah, there's that. And here are some of your late night events happening on, I'm just double checking the time. So here are some of your late night ha events happening Thursday night. Uh, Flogging Molly, Life is Good Tour. And it's going to be at the Wilma. It's going to be a folk music, uh, country dance lesson with uh, instructor Kathy Clark. Every Wednesday night and Thursday night, Kathy Clark hosts uh, country dance lessons at Sunrise Saloon. Um, Tyler uh, Bernharm with special guest and Elisa Rose is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. It's going to be country music, live jazz of the Plonk. Annalisa Rose and Tyler Burnham is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon at 8.30 p.m. So there's a lot of things happening in the Sunrise Saloon, apparently, um, Thursday night. Uh, rocking karaoke at the Dark Horse, um, karaoke at VFW, and then, of course, Top Hat Lounge is doing rock and funk, Sneaky Pete, and the Secret Weapons. So that's kind of what's happening for your... Uh, next uh, two days here in the city of Missoula. So, um, of course, once again, I want to talk to you guys about our orientation, which is happening tonight at 5.30 p.m. If you're interested, you can log on to MCAT.org to find out more information about... Oh, no! Log on to MCAT.org. My bad. You go to MCAT.org to find out more information about what it is, um, what MCAT is, uh, what programs we've done, and what programs are we doing, as well as how can you get involved with MCAT with how do I request event recording and submit a program. So if you have an event that's coming up that needs to be documented, MCAT will be there to document it. So we get a video record of what happens here in and around the city of Missoula. So if you're interested in that, go to MCAT.org. But of course, if you're interested in, in myself, you go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to meet you. Write it out twice. You can also like, uh, subscribe to me on YouTube, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. Three different things uh, basically doing the same thing on three different so social media platforms, which is why uh, it's, it's, it's weird. I don't know why they do that, but it just it's just the way it is because they, w they all want to be different. Um, uh, what is it for uh, um, in Instagram? Follow you on Instagram? So I guess following is the big thing with a lot of other things, but of course Facebook is like and YouTube is subscribe. So without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning on Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. This Friday we'll have an amazing Flagship Friday video for you guys starring moi and I think it's going to be a really good one so you guys check that out and I will see you guys Friday <laughs>